Well, y'all know we're really starting a video off right. <laughs> Stupid thing. But this is a little more like it. So, uh, welcome back everybody to the world's worst fishing, your best source for lure making TV. And what we're doing today is we're having fun. I've been doing a lot of hand pouring lately. And um, you know what? I just want to have an injection party. So that's what we're going to do. We've got our uh, fishing all out shout out there fishing all out vice uh ready to go and i've got a color in mind that i don't think i've done on film and may have really never done at all I, i've been doing this so long i kind of can't remember them all but we've got our blending block set up of a nice variety of different molds uh in fact i don't even remember what all's in there so it's gonna be a little bit of a surprise and uh we're kind of cleaning off some uh pyrex cups there those are the uh, the two cup size, and we're just going to run some different colors today. Um, sort sort of a bait blog, but also just kind of having some fun again. So it's not often that I have to wear a jacket, but it is it is, ladies and gentlemen, it is absolutely cold today. Now some of y'all are going to laugh, but you have to remember, I'm from Florida, and uh, yeah, it's in the low 40s. So let's see, this morning it was in the 30s. So it's probably about 44 degrees in the garage right now, which I know some of y'all, some of y'all are laughing at me, but it's pretty cold. And that actually kind of creates, you know, somewhat of a challenge with your injection because your molds can be really cold, your injectors can be cold, and so the plastic's just not gonna go right. Uh, so we probably will have to preheat some of our stuff today. But um, yeah, let's have some fun. I'm excited. This is the first video, I think, of the new year for me. Um, so it's been a really busy time. I haven't had much time to film. I've kind of, you know, just been sneaking out here whenever I can to, you know, pour some baits to sell and just to, um, you know, keep practicing my pouring. But um, I'm hoping we can do some cool stuff today. Let's go find out. All right. So we've got quite a bit of plastic in there. So that's probably about a nine minute cook on, uh, on this old little microwave right here. So we'll meet y'all back when, and uh, we'll get everything else fired up, ready to make some baits. Here's some uh, recent triples that I did. So that right there is the crazy hog in sort of a brown, emerald green, and sort of like a school bus yellow. So you can see the three colors inlaid there pretty cool all right so i kind of want to start with this blue and brown base and i kind of want to make them a little more opaque than i'm used to and i think we're going to achieve that by adding a little bit of white to each side which will brighten them up and opaque them so that's sort of i think the direction we're going to take and I want this blue a lot brighter than that, which is also why we're gonna use white. But I think a, a brown and blue, more, more of a lighter blue, almost lighten it up to where it's baby bluish. I don't know, we're gonna find out. But something like that is kind of what I had in mind. All right, so we have our brown and blue here, and we're just gonna add a little bit of white to the blue. And here's how much of a difference white makes. So like that's one drop of white and two cups of plastic, and you'll see it brightened it up pretty good. So here's with three more drops of white. Yeah, you can see it's definitely brighter and it's more opaque but actually not opaque enough so we're just going to keep adding it there's four more that's probably all we're going to do i would i would assume but you know i may be wrong i don't really work with white a whole lot that's kind of why i wanted to do this color is because it's a little bit of uncharted territory for me i'm i'm not real good at this this is not my bag so i am i am not the most experienced at opaquing my colors with white in fact for the most part 
of my bait making time, I've kind of stayed away from white. It's it's just kind of difficult to use, if if I'm being very honest. So let's uh, let's do a little bit of a drizzle test here, and just kind of look at both sides of the aisle. All right, it's looking pretty good, but neither one is as thick as I want it. I still want both of these thicker. So I'm just going to add more brown and then add some more white. And hopefully that won't change the hue too much, but just overall, just thicken the same thing up. I just want things a little bit thicker. The blue is a little closer to where I want it, um, but we still need to opaque it. I think it already has plenty of blue in it. We just need to keep, need to keep whitening it up and opaquing it. So we're going to move that and see if we did any better. Sorry if this kind of color building portion of the video is taking a long time. But, you know, this is a lot of the process. So you're, you're kind of seeing what, what I really go through out here when I'm trying to do something. It's, it's not always just kind of point and click and it works. Okay, so that right there is looking a little bit better. And now we want to add some black flake. I'm going to add black flake to both sides for texture. And sometimes colors like this look really good with super large black flake with like the 6-2 size. We're just going to kind of keep it simple on both sides with the, uh, I guess, the medium size. So I'm just going to kind of stir this in real quick. And, and you know, it's crazy. The more you opaque a color, the more flake you have to add for you to be able to really see the flake. So sometimes, you know, if your colors are mixed really thick, you got to add a ton more flake in there for you to actually see things. And real quick, got to show you the best part of having a, a pneumatic vise. Oh, that's just so cool. Lock and load. All right, round one. Here we go. Just going to run them till we run out of plastic. I know one of these is the Ecto Craw. One is uh, the Phantom, which might look cool in this. Uh, one is the Crazy Hog. And, uh, okay, yeah, those right there are the Stingers. So, okay. Yeah, we might, that might be everything that's in here. But I think they'll look good in these colors. Something I don't normally do, like I said. Yeah, I think we had just enough. Okay, let's power down and I guess take a look. We'll start uh, over here at the top with the stingers. And uh, I still do not have drumsticks. I apologize, like I said, it's been a busy time, but I will get some soon. Okay, the blue side is very blue. And the brown, okay, yeah. That's, okay. That's what I wanted right there. That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, let's uh, let's zoom in actually a little bit. Okay, I I had to have done a color like this before. Does any do any of y'all remember? Because I certainly can't uh, nowadays. Uh, you know, this is kind of like blue crawl, but if I've done if I've done a color like this on film before, please let me know. And even if I have, I don't care. It's beautiful. Oh my God. The laundry. All right. Yeah, it's not the same without sticks. Second stinger mold. I tell you, oh my gosh. I'm just going to have to keep my blood pressure down. I tell you, this color looks really good in the stinger, which really, really makes me think it's going to look great in some of the other uh, baits that we're doing it in because we have some great stuff in this lineup. And uh, yeah, not too bad. That's exactly what I wanted it to be. So I actually, you know, I spent a long time on the color build, like I mentioned earlier. You know, we were just kind of taking forever there, but I got it, I nailed it. That's exactly what I wanted. So uh, I cannot complain. Okay, this will be exciting because this is the mighty Ecto Crawl. Oh my gosh. 
Yes, look at this. Look at that. That's what I wanted to see is the brown with that thick, opaque, kind of baby blue. That's what I wanted to see was the interaction of those two colors. That's why we did this. Oh my gosh. Y'all, is this like a great blue crawl or what? Is that what you would even call this? You know, because blue crawl is a real thing. People know that one. But what is this? I don't know. It's nameless. Oh my gosh. This is... I'm, I'm excited. I wish I would have made a lot more of this. I mean, we're still going to do some more. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, I only have so much plastic mixed up. Next up is the Phantom, I believe. Yeah! And this is the Core Shot Phantom, just not Core Shotted. Shotted, if that's, if that's a word. Oh, yeah. What do y'all think of that? This is Josh Clark's personal favorite bait to flip. For flipping, punching heavy cover. Even uh, even like we do here in Florida. He'd rather flip that than that. But uh, yeah, I think that's looking good. The Phantom is an awesome bait, makes an excellent jig trailer. It's, it's just a do everything bait. You can bed fish with it, you can swim it. Obviously it's a great flipping bait. It just kind of does it all. Now this, is what I'm also really excited for, right? See how these colors are gonna interact in the crazy hog. This should be insane. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Take a look at this. Oh yeah. Yes sir. Look at that madness. Look at how it just bl blends the colors. There's so many little, you know, appendages and legs for this mold to blend color. So, I mean, how about that, y'all? <laughs> this is so much fun. This is why I wanted to do this. Because this, this is fun. Even though it's freezing, I'm having fun, and I hope y'all are too. Try this color at home. I don't think you'll regret it. All right, so, uh-oh. We're gonna have to put this Phantom back. I originally was going to leave the Phantom out because it was kind of my least favorite one, but we'll just use it as a spacer. So we're only gonna run the Crazy Hog, the Ecto Craw, and then definitely the Stingers. Man, I'm so glad this color worked out so good on the first try because I did not want to mix all that up again. That's just not enjoyable to have to uh, throw away a bunch of plastic and then start over. But I am loving this. I cannot wait to shoot the next round. Uh, so we've got the plastic just kind of reheating just a little bit. You know, kind of have to re-stir. But uh, I was gonna show y'all real quick. I, uh, I kind of made a little table here, right? So the vise kind of extends for a while, but it has this kind of gap in it. I don't know if that's in focus. But I basically just set some molds down and now I essentially have a tabletop surface to put my cups on. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, you know, that way they don't, you know, tip over. Of course, you got to use caution like you would anytime, but uh, I can set larger cups down on that flat surface right kind of in line with the rest of the vise. So I don't know, that's nothing ingenious, of course, but uh, that's something that I do that helps me. All right, round two, lock and load, here we go. Quick stir. This is the uh, Ecto right here. Fingers right here. All right, so we're looking at round two, and look at this one. I love this. It almost looks like I C blocked it. It's sort of an uneven laminate that got a little bit of a swirl to it. 
and to me that's just amazing 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 not quite swirl block effect um, with the AIC block but but dang close yeah so here's round two golly that's just man I had to have done this before and I'm sure a thousand other people have but this is a good one y'all if you've never done this uh, definitely do this and I think I snuck like two or three drops of black into that brown and then added the white to opaque it so you know you don't have you don't have to of course do it exactly like someone else does it but I don't know that's pretty special right there I'm I'm digging that so completely off topic have any of y'all seen that movie on Netflix don't look up is that not the funniest thing ever just how accurate it is to how stupid kind of everyone is I don't know. I thought the movie was absolute comedy gold. Here we go. A little up close and personal look at a little bit more action here. So, we'll start again on the crazy hogs. At least I think that's what that is. Good board. Yeah, now to the ecto. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why you're supposed to wear both gloves, Jones. In case the plastic comes back up. Idiot. <clears throat> All right, so that right there was round three, I believe. And uh, I think we have enough plastic for one more round, but we're gonna sneak in one bonus mold and we're not gonna tell you what it is. So real quick, does anyone else get as excited as I do when you actually take a mold apart and all the baits are still in there perfectly? Like this is how this mold came apart. It's like. A flawless mold separation there I I don't know I just I really get a kick out of that it, it almost pains me to take them out all right the mystery mold guess what you think it is and leave me a comment down below what you thought the mystery mold was gonna be the bonus mold and if you got it right here we go oh here we don't go all right, dun 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 dun. I would do a drum roll, but I'm lame. Boom! Magnum AR worm. Yeah. Boy, this thing's a beast. Forgot how massive this bait is. Look at that. <laughs> Not my favorite worm color, but I wanted to see it in a worm while I had the plastic out. So I'm glad I didn't just get out all my worm molds and start running this. But it's certainly not the worst worm color either. It's, it definitely looks cool in the tail where it blends the two colors. But probably, probably uh, happy that I didn't try to make a bunch of worms with it. But that ain't bad. Tell me if you got it right though. If you guessed what mold it was going to be. So this is what you want to see, I think, anytime you're running laminate injection when you, you know, really can't remelt your runners right. You're going to have more waste. But, I mean, we started with a little over four cups of plastic. So we technically kind of overfilled both of the larger cups. And this is all that's left. So to me, that's, that's a really, really good, efficient use of our plastic. And uh, that's what you want to see is minimal waste, minimal leftover. You know, that way you're getting the most out of your materials. You're getting the most valuable or the most value out of your materials. And, um, you know, I think that's always what you want to see at the end of the day. So I got to show y'all a hand pour before we go. This was probably the hardest bait I've ever made. And, um, you know, I've made some really complex layered pours and stuff like that. This is a eight layer laminate, uh, sort of like a little sand bass, which are called white bass around here. But I think um, there's there's like a certain strain or a type of sand bass that, that has yellow in it. And so I thought that would be really, try, uh, really cool to make, but you can see the veins are all floating veins. And what I mean by that is the black stripes don't go to the edge of the mold they're kind of floating within that white and that was really hard to achieve not to mention just to pour them evenly 
and to stop the veins where they need to stop and to space them evenly, get them straight and get the temperatures right. Holy cow. So any of you uh, hand pour enthusiasts, if you want a challenge, it doesn't have to be a little striper like this, but try to do a really, really controlled multi, multi-layer laminate. I think that will help you, help you build your pouring chops. Uh, it certainly did for me. All right, and here's all our stuff from today. I'm actually hanging them up on one of my shelves just to kind of let everything cure, hanging straight. But yeah, all of that from four cups of plastic. Isn't that great? Just goes to show really how far your materials can go. I mean, four cups of plastic is not a lot of money in materials. And look at what we got. That's why this hobby is so awesome. So this was too outrageous not to show you guys. Um, <laughs> this is all the stuff I have to package up. Well, actually, these do not have eyes yet. Those are not sold. But uh, this is what's mailing out uh, as soon as I get them bagged up. So we have some really, really great stuff there. Those are some five inchers with sort of that uh, holographic uh, belly. Um, those are some uh, beautiful, beautiful layered pours, as are those. Those are the, uh, the stripers the little sand bass that I showed you. Those are the triples that, that uh, I think I showed y'all at the beginning of the video. Uh, and, then, and then we get into the shads. Here are uh, a bunch of green color shift shads. That's sort of a sexy shad right there with a, um, that's a really cool pigment on the belly there. That is snow shine from Dead on Plastics, which uh, is, you know, all this, all this is made with Dead on Plastics, but they they have a pigment called snow shine, which makes a really great belly. Those are uh, ZTP Hypershift shads. Uh, those right there are emerald shads that I call them, but they're using uh, ZTF Hypershift pigment on the top there. Um, and a couple other things. So uh, yeah, be on the lookout for some of these. But uh, yeah, that's, um, <laughs> I usually don't have maybe quite this many at once, but um, I laid all these out because I got to put eyes on those and I have to package those up. And I was like, well, I don't ever have a table full like that. So I figured y'all might think it's kind of funny. Just all this. Yeah. Like, like I said at the beginning of the video, I've been doing a lot of pouring. So, uh, you know, today was all about having fun. So hope y'all enjoyed the video and some bonus footage. All right, everybody. Well, happy new year. And, um, I think that's going to wrap this video up. I got a call just a few days ago. A very exciting new piece of equipment is in the final stages and is going to be coming here soon, coming to a video near you. Uh, it's going to be an amazing, amazing little piece of equipment, really specific to the hand pour crowd. Um, I can't wait to show it to you guys. I can't wait to have one. Uh, it's been a long time coming, so uh, I'm excited for that. So be on the lookout for a video kind of showing off a whole new concept. And uh, I think everyone's going to going to like it. So um, anyway, I'm going to go eat lunch now. But uh, hope you all had as much fun as I did that. You know, I woke up this morning. I knew I wanted to film today and I was, you know, brainstorming ideas. And I'm like, let's just go have fun making baits. So that's that's how we're going to start the new year. Having fun. Uh, please like subscribe, hit the notification bell and we will see you all in the next one.